in this video we are going to continue our discussion on the iris data set in tableau so this is what we got in the previous video that is the data on the basis of the petal width and the petal length and as soon as we brought this species into the colors part these are the three clusters we got now what is this cluster if you take a look at this blue portion let me just select all of that so this is a blue portion and we can just just a second we can just keep, click on keep only if that's possible okay that's not possible so uh, let's just work this way so this blue portion is selected right that means all the data points which have a lower petal length and a lower petal width are in this iris setosa species right so they are given a cluster means they are uh, collected together so if any point if any new data or if any new point occurs like over here or over here that is near to this cluster then uh, our system or our machine learning algorithm would be able to classify it as iris setosa so this is what the purpose of a machine learning algorithm is to work on the previous data set firstly it works on the previous data set that is this data set suppose and now it has got a parameter on how it is going to work now if any new data comes it would be able to classify it very easily as iris setosa that is if any data set which is given a lower petal length and a lower petal width it would be iris setosa okay next we have is iris versicolor so if we just go on keep only iris versicolor okay so keep only won't work we can just select it like this so what will happen is in the case of iris versicolor that's orange the petal length is between 3 cm to 5.5 cm similarly the petal width is between 1 cm to 2 cm all the data between this range is in iris versicolor with a few exceptions like this is just below 3 or it is an exact 3 right and this is 1.8 this is exact one like this so all this data we are having that means any of the uh, data which is in these range would be classified as iris versicolor the third is iris virginica and this is the data we are getting for iris virginica although some of the data for iris versicolor and iris virginica is colliding with one another like these two points so it might be a little bit difficult to classify them correctly but we can get a pretty good accuracy through these clusters right that is the um, collection of the similar kind of data why are they called clusters or how are they found or how are they formed that is through the center point each of these clusters have a center point and the data that is taken its distance from the center point is taken if that distance is within the available range so that data point is classified as that particular cluster otherwise it is classified as a part of some other cluster suppose if i have a data point over here right so it is closer to this orange color cluster so it would be classified as iris versicolor instead of this virginica or setosa however if it is over here so it is closer to this particular cluster that's why it would be classified as setosa so that is how the classification occurs this is just one machine learning algorithm which is the clustering algorithm okay so we are using this clustering algorithm and this is the k-means clustering algorithm that means we have the n number of clusters or the k number of clusters here the number of clusters is three that is sedosa versicolor and virginica right this is on the basis of the petal width and the petal length similarly we are going to do the exact analysis on the basis of the sepal length and sepal width why are we doing these two things i will explain you just a few seconds later so here we had the length in the columns let's do the same thing sepal length in the columns and sepal width in the rows make sure the aggregate measures are unchecked this is what we are getting if we go to species and bring in the color parameter over here so this is the clusters let me just get the entire view this is the clusters we are getting on the basis of the sepal width and the sepal length that means the uh, this blue part is setosa, orange part is versicolor, and the red part is virginica. Now, if you take a look at these two data sets or these two graphs, then what do you think is best for identifying the 
uh, type of a new data of course it's the petal length and the petal width because in the case of sepal length and sepal width the data is all clubbed together right so we cannot use this as a parameter it is essential to compare both of them because we wanted the best results for us best results for our algorithm best results for our model and when we compared them we found that petal width and the petal length is a better parameter for the cluster uh, for finding out the clusters right now uh, the sepal length has been rejected so we can move this sheet over here and work with this petal this is the data that was given to us now what happens is we are going to create a machine learning algorithm and allow it to find this out on itself okay so what are we going to do we are going to create the ml algo this is the ml algo it would be created on the basis of the petal length and the petal width just make sure that uh, the length is in the columns in the actual data as well yes same go to analysis uh, and check the aggregate measures so this is the data and we have to classify it so how do we classify it using machine learning algorithm you need to go to this analytics tab here we have this cluster in the models you see this is the models that means it is a machine learning models and here we have a clusters so if we just open it up these are the variables that it has taken and if you want a specific number of clusters you can specify that otherwise it automatically takes it and automatically it has identified three clusters let me just change it to entire view this is what our algorithm has predicted our algorithm has predicted that this is cluster number one this is cluster number two and this is cluster number three this looks a very good prediction however there is some issue in this like if you just go to this actual data and you see that these two uh, this is a red color virginica this is also a red colored virginica however in the case of machine learning algorithm this is also uh, taken in cluster 2 and this is also taken in cluster 2 which means of course the data is not 100 percent accurate despite that it is a pretty good result because 100 percent accuracy is uh, not achievable especially in data science because that would mean that we have overfitted our data and overfitting is always an issue it may work for some data but for the unseen or the new data it may pose the problems that is why a accuracy a higher accuracy is good uh, above 60 to 70 percent anything above that is considered to be good so we would be finding about the accuracy of this model as well okay but before that what we are going to do is right now if you see we have created three clusters or the algorithm has created three clusters one two and three but we want them to be specified as these species setosa versicolor and virginica so what we can do is uh, we need to go to this sheet drag these clusters into the tables uh, just a second create a copy of it and drag it into the table so a new column would be created and that would be the clusters let's just name it as clusters um k-means okay let's just name it the algorithm now what i'm gonna do is instead of one two and three i'm just gonna change its names so how are we gonna do that let me come to this petal data here i'm just going to edit this group the cluster one is going to be the iris setosa so it's going to be iris sedosa next is going to be the iris versicolor so iris versicolor now you need to make one thing really really sure over here is that there is no spelling mistakes if there is a spelling mistake then the accuracy of the model would be affected how we will just take a few seconds to talk about that and that's done click on apply click on ok now if you go to ml algorithm we have clusters key means we can drop it into the colors part and now we are getting these uh, cluster names as the species names we don't have those cluster one cluster two and cluster three right now how are we gonna uh, talk about the accuracy of this model or how are we gonna find out the accuracy of the model uh, we will see it in the next video that's all for this one thanks for watching